What's up guys, it's Ty here. In this video, I'm gonna unlock the secrets of financial independence and living frugally. In fact, I intend on making this the single video you need to watch to understand everything you need to know about financial independence. I'll also be breaking down why the idea of early retirement is a myth for 99% of the population. By the end of this video, you'll be left with some simple tips you can put into practice today and start working toward your own financial independence. As usual, I have a screenshot at the end of the video for you to review what we talked about so you can start reviewing these whenever you like. Remember, without changing the way we think about money, our lives will never change. If you don't mind hitting the thumbs up button for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get into the first idea. Make more than you spend and make that gap as big as possible. I'm gonna repeat it again because it's that important. Make more than you spend and make that gap as big as possible. I want you to burn that idea into your memory because it's the heart and soul of financial independence. Understanding that idea will make everything else in this video much easier to understand and much more beneficial to you. Okay, let's break this down further. Basically, all the money you make is offset by the expenses you have every month. Of course, there's some money left over. That leftover money isn't just leftover money, it's for paying down debt, saving money for an e-fund, or investing in the stock market. By deeply understanding this concept, you start to change your decision making. Every potential purchase decision ends up being more of a value trade. Do you want to have extra money left over so you can do those three important financial things, or do you want that item? When you think about this and reducing your expenses, you are actually starting to increase your financial independence speed. What I mean by that is if you get your expenses as close to zero as possible, then you're going as fast as possible towards financial independence. Why do the title slide say doing your finances like a business? Because when you start to see that money as your personal profit, you begin to think differently. Make no mistake, you can spend money on yourself to have fun, I'll cover that in a second, but be smart about it. Know yourself and spend dollars that agree with you. At the same time, look for ways to boost your income as high as you can possibly get it to go or start your own business or get raises or whatever you need to do. That'll make this gap even bigger. To make the biggest impact possible on your financial independence journey, you need to look to cut the biggest expenses possible. This is the most direct way to help yourself. By attacking the biggest budgets on your item now, you immediately feel the impact and you can enjoy those benefits for even longer down the road. Probably the biggest item on your list is your housing expenses. A lot of people have up to 33 to even 50% of their monthly budget tied up in these expenses for rent or mortgage payments, and this is just way too much. Here are some ideas for cutting that housing expense down to a minimum. First, you could move back in with your parents after college to save rent. You could get roommates, which could decrease things up to 75% if you get three other roommates. You could also house hack, which means buying a house or buying a duplex and renting out the other rooms or the other spaces inside that place to other people. So they pay your mortgage and you actually end up living for free. Another big expense in our lives are the cars we drive or the automobiles that we purchase. Car purchases are a great way to lose money before you even know what happened. Probably the worst part about it is the depreciation. Uh, the next model is coming out next year, so this model that you just bought is just tanking in value, unfortunately. To go a little bit more in depth here, that means if you buy a $20,000 car in just like a short year or maybe two years, that car may only be worth $17,000 or only $15,000. That's a potential $5,000 loss and the car works just fine. If you thought that was bad, consider this. If you ended up buying a new car, what actually happened is you bought a new car, but you ended up with a used car because you drove off the lot with it. Just because you were the one to drive that new car off the lot means that it's now suddenly immediately worth less because it's a used car. This is on top of the depreciation. It's, it's not the same thing. Instead, consider buying a used car in order to save money that would otherwise be lost. A lot of dealerships have a CPO program, which would save you some headaches in case that you might have bought a lemon. An even cheaper option is to buy cars that are more than 10 years old from reputable Japanese brands like Honda or Toyota. Your ego may not like it, but your pocketbook will. The last expense I want to talk about here is entertainment and eating out. Everybody wants to go out and have fun. I'm no different. If you find yourself spending money on nights out because you enjoy it, build it into your budget and make it work. But if you find yourself spending money on nights out just because your friends wanna go out and you really just wanna see your friends and the night out isn't the big deal, then just consider having everybody over to your place and pouring them a drink yourself. It'll be way, way, way cheaper. 
To go even further, you could make them dinner instead of buying food at a restaurant when it's your turn to buy for your friends. The bottom line here for this expense is that you need to know yourself in order to get the most happiness out of every dollar. Knowing yourself will allow you to spend dollars on yourself in a way that really entertains you and really makes you happy versus just kind of blowing up your budget for no reason and slowing down your financial independence. Okay, here's a fun flip side to the previous point. Some expenses just don't matter. Avocado toast, Starbucks coffee, one-time expensive dinners with family just don't matter if you've got the rent thing right in the background. Seriously, if you've got the rent question handled, then you're saving hundreds of dollars a month and spending five or 10 on yourself every now and then is just not gonna make a dent. Go enjoy yourself. Again, I'm gonna reiterate because I think it's so important. Small dollars really just don't add up in any meaningful way as long as you've got the really big stuff right. The rent, if that's fixed, you're good. If, if the car payment is also taken care of, go buy a Starbucks right now. Don't worry about it. Bottom line, I think you should be somebody who understands how to make themselves happy w without spending too much. If you can find cheap hobbies, that's the way to go. If you really need to have an expensive hobby in your life, make sure it doesn't get so big that you're canceling out rent or you're canceling out a, a good car or car payment situation. Okay, right now you've got your expenses under control. Another way to fail financial independence is to find yourself with a lot of high interest debt. If you've got your expenses under control and if you've got that large gap between what you earn and what you spend, you shouldn't have this problem, but every now and then I tend to find someone with this problem. Basically, high interest debt is something you can't invest your way out of. A credit card can charge you as much as like 22 or 25% interest, and there's no investment on the market that, that could make up for that. Investing at 7% and then having credit card debt at 22%, what do you think is gonna happen there? One's going up kind of steadily, the other one is nose diving and anchoring you to the bottom of the ocean. This one's pretty simple. If you have high interest debt, pay it off first. Use that earnings gap to just blow up the debt and get rid of it. Speaking of investing, you can't do it alone. You're gonna need to enlist some help along the way. That's right, you're gonna have to enlist the most powerful thinkers and best workers in the world to help you on your journey. You might be thinking, Ty, what, how are we gonna enlist the best thinkers in the world to help me, I'm just a normal person. And I tell you, easy, just invest in the S&P 500. You might be thinking, what does that have to do with the best workers in the world? Well, inside the S&P 500 are Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Larry Page, Mark Zuckerberg, and Tim Cook. I think you can recognize some of those names. If you can't, those five guys are in charge of some of the biggest companies in the world, such as Amazon, Berkshire Hathaway, Google, Facebook, and Apple. If you're still confused where this is going, hopefully this will make it clear. Inside the S&P 500 are all five of those very powerful companies. By investing in the S&P 500, you have all five of those guys working for you to earn dollars for you and then turn around and give you a cut. That's right, they'll run five of the biggest companies in the world and earn a profit for those companies and then turn around and give you some of it. If you're wondering how to invest, it's as simple as having your own bank account, opening up an investment account with Vanguard or Fidelity, and then transferring some money over into your investment account from your bank account, and then buying whatever securities you wanna buy. What securities should you buy? That's where you come in and you have to kinda of do your own research. You can tell I like the S&P 500, but that doesn't mean it's the best choice for you. Make sure you look into it yourself. How do you know when you're done? That's an excellent question. That's probably my favorite question about this entire thing. When can you stop working? As a rule of thumb, whenever your investment account grows to 25 times your annual expenses, you can pull a trigger, you can stop working. There was a study done called the Trinity Study, which you should Google if you'd like to read up more on this, but it basically tells you when your portfolio is big enough to cover you for the rest of your life. You can quit working when you have enough investments. Ultimately, when you have enough money coming in from a portfolio, whether it's investments or a business you own or something like that, that feeds you enough money to cover your expenses, then you can say you're done. You've reached the finish line. Whew. This video is super long. Here's a screenshot to help you review everything we talked about. Remember, without changing our thinking and actually taking action, our lives will never change. I'm glad you watched this video, but it's not the same as watching this video and then actually doing something about it. Trust me on this. At least save some more money. Your life will be better off. Don't forget to drop me a thumbs up if you found this useful. 
As usual, thank you so much for watching. You guys make these videos worth making. See you in the next video.